All right, let's try this again. This is my second time recording this, since I wasn't happy with my first attempt. Well, I did a series of videos for last year's finals, so I figured I might as well do it again for this year's finals. It's been more than a couple of hours since game one ended, so I've had time to put my thoughts out for me to really think them through. The Nuggets took game one at home, and that wasn't very surprising. Oh yeah, I'm actually recording with a microphone this time instead of a gaming headset, so the sound quality should be a little bit better. Hopefully my voice doesn't fade in and out too much, but if it does, well, sorry, that's just some technical difficulties. First thoughts on the series? If Joker receives this level of support from his teammates in the outside shooting, this is going to be a real short series. There's not much Miami can do unless Foster gets really creative. Every starter for the Nuggets, aside from Kincavious Caldwell Pope, had double-digit points by the halftime. And the Joker tallied 10 assists for good measure. Denver shot a disciplined 5 for 11 from deep compared to the Heat's 4 for 17. And that was a big reason the Nuggets led by 17. Even with Bam Adebayo's 8 for 13 inside, which accounted for half of Miami's field goals in the first half. It didn't get much better from deep by the end of the third. <laughs> the disparity was still dramatic, with the Heat sitting at 7 for 27 to Denver's 8 for 19. A couple of days ago, after Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, Charles Barkley criticized Boston for jacking up threes and not having a plan B. And somehow Miami didn't think that that statement would also apply to that. Well, Adebayo must have taken it to heart. But then again, there's a reason Miami actually forfeited camp space to sign him to his rookie extension a year early. You wonder if Spolstra is going to move Jimmy Butler to the four going forward. I mean, I did see a possession or two where Butler ended up on Gordon and it kind of, I don't want to say it worked, but it did not not work. For Miami, and at this point, you take what you can get. Through the first two thirds of the fourth quarter, the Heat did come alive desperately, cutting into the lead to try and make it a game, but Joker was so good at pacing the Nuggets and remained so unfazed, he literally had me Googling Ringo Starr to see if there was some sort of comparison I could make for this video. Like, that's how good Joker was down the stretch in terms of keeping pace. Exquisite timing. He, I mean, he would get, he got the ball with about two seconds left on the shot clock, lined up a three, and just drilled it all in one motion. Didn't look like Miami could rush him at all. I mean, it's strange. The year Joker deserves the MVP most of all is the year he didn't win it. It's going to be an odd thing to look back on. As for some of the stat lines at conclusion... Butler put up 13, 7, and 7 on 6 of 14 shooting, which is not great. I get the defensive assignments of Murray and or Gordon and or Michael Porter Jr. take a lot out of your offensive game, but one of those numbers has got to go up. Either you've got to be helping out a buy on the glass, you've got to be helping with playmaking, or you've got to be putting the ball in the bucket. Something else has to come on the offensive end, and it doesn't have to be score. It can be screens. It can be motion to drag a Nuggets defender away from the action. It, all right. I know Jimmy can do better. I mean, he didn't do terribly, but he's not what we were expecting, considering what we'd seen this postseason. Adebayo finished with 26, 13, and 5. And considering he had 24 points at the end of the third quarter, that means he went one for two in the fourth. And it wasn't a foul trouble. He finished the game with only four fouls. So I get Miami was putting up threes because they were behind, and that's the easiest way to narrow a lead real quickly. But go inside. Adebayo clearly had something going. Miami did receive 31 bench points, including 11 from Kyle Lowry, 18 from Highsmith, who is rapidly making a name for himself in these finals, putting that 18 up on 7 for 10 shooting. And then Duncan Robinson went one from five from deep for three points. Miami's final long range total, 13 for 39. That's one out of three. That's 33%. That's not going to work in the modern game. As for the Nuggets' final stat lines, putting aside the Joker's triple double of 27, 10, and 14, Murray threw in 26 points, six rebounds, and 10 assists on a game high 44 minutes. 
Porter Jr. started off hot, but he cooled off for 14 points. He also put in 13 rebounds. Gordon finished with 16 points and 6 rebounds, and Bruce Brown gave Denver 10 points off the bench in 21 minutes. I know the Nuggets are a 1 seed and Miami is an A seed, but I pulled up this Rick Adelman quote that I think accurately summarizes most final series. Adelman came up, Adelman said this after Jordan's three-point explosion for the 1992 Finals. There are a lot of series where the first game goes like this, and the second game is totally different. It better be different. I know we're better than this. Believe me. So, I'll leave any viewers with that quote. <laughs> I'll throw the link I pulled the article, the, ad the article from, in the description below. So, if you actually want to Check my words.